Good evening, everyone. Hope you're well and safe. Um, tonight we're speaking to Todd Bonner from Detroit Paranormal Expeditions. Um, we're going to bring him on now. Hi, Todd. Hi, Todd. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. Oh, you? uh, oh, you're welcome. You're very welcome. How have um, you been? How have you been? I guess good as it can possibly be. Uh, COVID obviously has been a um, hardship for a lot of people. And mm -hmm. if you're in the paranormal, it's even harder to try and navigate, um, to try and get in locations and investigate. Um, you just have to be safe, really, honestly, in, in these times. And we're hoping 2021 with the vaccines and stuff like that rolling out that maybe it'll be a little more easier than what it's yeah. been the past year. But I think it's been just tough on everybody in general. Um, and obviously Never, the paranormal, I've never like this. It's really, really awful it's isn't it awful. horrible i never thought i'd see something in my like this in my lifetime but i think mm -hmm. the paranormal for a lot of us is kind of an outlet to get away from our everyday mm -hmm. lives and, and work yeah. with kids then that's kind of taken away from you with covid um mm -hmm. it's been a rough go we've, we've managed to do a, a few spots the last year and a half um but you have to take those safety precautions and um if you really want to do it you can make it happen but i think yeah anything like that people need to do stuff so they don't get depressed they don't get sad um feel isolated uh here in michigan we've had a pretty good lockdown off and on for the last year and um you just see a lot of small businesses going out of business never opening again um mm -hmm. it's affected a lot of people so hopefully this year will be a lot better for everyone um yeah yeah, yeah. fingers and, crossed but I think it's allowed us and the way you guys do it, live streaming, to kind of bring people some entertainment, some happiness mm -hmm. during their day, um, and a little something a little different. I know any way you can help people um, not feel so isolated, not get that depression set on, and hopefully we yeah. can lift them up when we're talking about the stuff we talk about, you know? Yeah, definitely. definitely. Get back out there, get any evidence. Yes. That's what it's all about. Yes. It'll be good. <laughs> um, could we just ask you, Todd, um, just – could you explain a little bit about yourself for everybody that's watching, um, just just in case they don't know who you are? Um, sure. Um, I'm co-founder of Detroit Paranormal Expeditions. I'm also co-owner of DPX Productions. It's a small uh, production company that uh, we do non-scripted uh, reality TV. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm host of the Pair Exchange, a little podcast I've done for years, and then I stopped about a year and a half ago. And now I've picked that back up recently again. Um, so I'm trying to oh, yeah. stay busy. I've had more time, I think, this year, year and a half than mm -hmm. before. Um, so I don't know. It, it's been a, a, a fun journey, a, a fun path. I've been doing the paranormal for about a decade professionally. I got involved with it, oh, about 10 years ago. Uh, Jeff Atkins is co-founder of Detroit Paranormal Expeditions, and I met him on our previous team we were on. Mm -hmm. And we were on that team together for five years or so, six years. And we just, the team didn't do enough or a lot, or, or we want to do more. Maybe it was us that want to do more and get out more and see more and travel more. And we decided to form Detroit Paranormal Expeditions. We started with nothing. We had nothing but an idea and a lot of ambition. And we've really, it's taken off the last, you know, four years. We just passed our four-year anniversary this past December. And... Mm -hmm it's grown more than I can ever think. I mean, we've been very fortunate to a lot of TV shows and uh, in newspapers. And I think even in the UK, Daily, Daily Mail and Daily Sun and stuff like that, <clears throat> we've been in, even on some of the uh, evidence we've captured, I've been over there. So it's been a fun <laughs> ride. It's an interesting journey. I met a lot of great people along mm -hmm. the way. So it's fun. Oh, brilliant. brilliant. Um, yeah, could we ask how it all started for you? Um, the I, the whole yeah. thing. I think for me, as I'm getting older, I'm kind of figuring out, but I've had a few mm -hmm. near death experiences when I was younger. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm still trying to figure out this journey I'm on. It's always evolving and changing, but I think that had a huge play in the paranormal. Um, mm -hmm. I've always been attracted to it and, I think for me, it's to answer, and everyone has their own reasons why they're involved in the paranormal, you know. Yes. For me, it's yeah. personal reasons. I, I just want to know, and I believe because of my near-death experiences, that there are things on the other side. There are otherworldly mm -hmm. things 
that are here with us, or maybe they follow you as an individual. Maybe it is a house that's haunted. Maybe it is an antique shop. Maybe it's an item. But I think <clears throat> for me personally, it feels like things follow me, whether it's, you know, uh, past family members, um, trying to guide you still, if that even makes sense. Yeah. But it, it's yeah. Just like a personal journey for me, I think, more than anything else, to um, enjoy this journey I'm on. It's scary at times. I didn't understand it when I, was, when I was younger, but as I've gotten older, I think it's, you know, enabled me to get to where I am now. Um, I understand things a lot better. I've experienced so many different things now. So it's um, it's still coming together. I may never figure it all out before I pass on, but I'm, I'm getting a better understanding of why I'm doing this or why I'm so pulled and drawn to it. Mm -hmm. It's a constant kind of learning curve, isn't it, for everybody? Um, we find that in this kind of field. You're learning all the time. You pick up new new ideas. Um, yeah, there's... Learn from everybody you around learn you. Learn from everyone around you. It's, it, it is really a... Um, and I, I, you have to kind of be a sponge. I mean, there's good ways to do things that I've learned um, from other people, and there's also things that I don't do that I've learned from other people that, that might not necessarily uh, jive with the way I do things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I think at the end of the day, everyone has their own reasons why they do this. Whether you're on a team or you're, you do it individually, it's still, you know, I always stick to my guns and stick to my intuition. I think intuition plays a huge part in this. Um, you know, it's just you have to trust, trust your gut instinct. And, and the more I've done this, the more I've, I think I've, been in, I've grown in tune with my body and intuition. And I actually can use this better in normal life, too, because I think mm -hmm. you learn to be more sensitive. Uh, even, you know, you're in the darkness at places, your your sight, your hearing, um, just your natural instincts kind of take over a lot of yes. times. And I think the more that we do this, the more that, you know, over the hundreds and hundreds of investigations I've done, I think I've got myself in tune with those kind of different heightened instincts that we're born with that we don't always use. Though, you know what I mean? Yes. Yes. Some people do, some people don't. There's people that don't do paranormal. They'll never understand what I'm talking about, sitting in a dark you know, location or a haunted hospital or a prison or a house um, to take that all in. And this isn't for everybody. You know, not, not a lot of people do this. If you look at the, the big picture, um, yeah. so it's, it's different for us, I believe. We're more in touch. Mm -hmm. Yes. Definitely for us. I mean, it's been, you know, along the way, we've become a bit more sensitive, um, obviously, like seeing, seeing more things, sensing more things. Um, just find the, the more you do it, the more, you know, your senses become more in tune. Um, I believe that. And it's, you know, and a lot of people, I'm still skeptical to a certain extent. extent. Mm -hmm. I think you have to be. You can't you just, do. Think, you, do. you know, because you hear these, some of these ghost stories or hauntings or supernatural things, people enhance those you know, making bigger stories than what they are. And I'm the type of person that's always been, I'd rather experience or feel it or see it myself to really believe it. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's why I kind of just jump in head first in a lot of things and just see what happens, you know? And, and that's another thing, like you were talking about the paranormal, everyone's technique's different. You don't run into the same person, you know, people do the same thing over and over. It might be the equipment might be the same you use. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I don't know if I'm a big proponent um, so much with equipment, we have thousands and thousands of dollars of equipment <clears throat> that people like to see issues. And sometimes I believe in them. Like we use a lot of spirit box. I believe the ghost boxes are, um, something I've kind of drawn myself to, but you know, there's the K2 meters and all this different stuff. There's so many variances that can affect those type of devices. Um, I'm just mm -hmm. old. I like to have a digital recorder a flashlight and just see what happens. Honestly, it's, um, sounds pretty simple, but that's just how I like to do it. Um, the spirit boxes the last few years, I've really, really started to come to enjoy them a lot more and I don't, can't explain them. And there's so many different variations of the ghost box or spirit box. And there's a handful of builders. There's not a lot of builders around the world that do this. There's a, I just picked up one from the UK, from Enlightened, I can't think of the last name of their group, um, Paranormal. And it's a different kind of box. I've never seen it before. So I should be getting it hopefully this week. But a lot of them are handheld. That, 
that could be the is that the new one that's got the ATDD feature? Yeah, and it's got this pulse. Yeah, yeah it's different. There's no like hacked radio with it. So yeah. the voices yeah. that come out of it are pretty sound pretty incredible. So I'm, I'm looking forward to trying to, you know that that out. And I always try. I buy stuff from all different builders, different you know variations, because mm -hmm. um, there are people like you and I that love doing the paranormal, but they can't. Um, I can't build that stuff too well. I've taken a stab at building some portal type boxes that have been pretty successful. Um, but like the hand carved wooden boxes, um, some of those internals, like a geo box, we have a geo box from George Brown and that's a pretty amazing piece of equipment, but they all use different variations. Some use, um, hacked radios, some use, um, apps, some use those new voice technology, um, like the box I'm getting soon, which I don't understand how that works, but it sounds amazing. So there's things like that that um, you always have to be open-minded to try new things and see what happens. And I think that's part of my journey too. I love, and there's some things I've bought that are just awful that I don't like. like mm -hmm. I got it, I'm like, I cannot believe I even bought this. But there's other stuff that's just been incredible. You know, I call them works of art almost because mm -hmm. they are, the, you know, a lot of these builders put a lot of creativity into them also. And, um, and there's not like a store, like a, Paranormal R Us, where you can just go shop down rows and rows of paranormal <laughs> equipment. You know, it's just these guys that do the paranormal that have figured out how to build things, and um, and there's not a lot of stock. You know, they usually build them when ordered. So, I'm very thankful for those guys because I think it's enabled us as investigators to find different ways to investigate and try different ways to investigate and see what works best for you. I think that's true. Um, going on with the paranormal. Well, you've done a few shows, haven't you? Is it Haunted Paranormal Files? Um, um, haunted Case Files. And I think it was, it was, in the, it was in the UK too. And I can't, they changed the name of it. It was like Paranormal Files or something. Um, haunted Case Files, Destination Fear, Paranormal Survivor, uh, Most Terrifying Places. Um, wow. A few more. There's a couple more. I can't think of them right now. Um, we just filmed for a new show. I can't say what it is because it's not out yet for um, Travel Channel and Discovery Plus. Uh, this Friday, I just filmed something for that. So um, that aspect, we've been very fortunate, <clears throat> and I'm very thankful for that. I know a lot of people don't like necessarily doing TV or they feel like it's selling out, but I actually like doing it because I get to tell my story, you know, and I get to enjoy telling the, the things I've done yeah. and seen and, and been a part of. So um, I enjoy myself that way. It's I don't think there's any harm in it. You know, I'm not faking anything or embellishing anything. I'm just telling my story a lot of the times or I'm part of like the destination fear guys. Mm -hmm. I love those guys. They're younger up and coming um, paranormal group. And I think that's cool the way they do things. Um, I'm older. I'm 48. Those guys are in their 20s. So it's kind of nice to see that big discrepancy and them trying new things and going to different places. And um, it's good for the younger generation, you know, because trying to pass what we do on to them it's kind of cool to see what's what's happening and they may find new things yeah. that we never thought about too. So, and they're, yeah. they're a legitimate show. I mean, they, I don't think they fake anything. They, they're good people and um, a good young group, good young group of people that um, are really trying to search for the unknown and, and th these things mm -hmm. that they're afraid of, they try to overcome it, which is kind of what we do anyway, too. You know, we're, we're, I've been yes. scared yes. of people. Yeah. You know, and you try to overcome your fear a lot of times to see. I think it's, a, it's only natural, isn't it? Um, fear is something that we all we all fear things, um, especially when we can't see can't see what it is that's actually happening. Um, but yeah, it just it's part and parcel of kind of for me, it's kind of like the thrill factor, um, living on your nerves in a sense. Um, no, it is for me too, and I think and I'm afraid of heights and roller coasters or, or anything like that. Like that. I think this is a rush for me, you know, and I, yeah. it's almost like you're yeah. addicted to it because when you get an evidence or you feel or, or see and have an experience, you want more. You want to yes. see what's yeah. going to happen next. So you keep going back and back and back and seeing what you can find. Um, mm -hmm. But it is like a rush. It's an exhilaration. I can't explain like the feeling I get when you get totally freaked out or, or creeped out about something. It's like something I can't explain, but I'm sure it's like people that are those adventures, like skydivers and, um, people that love doing that kind of crazy adventure type things. The same, it's probably the same feeling, the like same exhilaration mm -hmm. um, that we experience. They probably experience too. 
it's kind of like when people say, oh my God, you sat in that dark room on your own. Like, weren't you scared? And it's like, well, no, not really. <laughs> I know. People think it's weird. But it is. I've, I've been in places before. Uh, there's a place in West Virginia, Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. It's one of the most mm -hmm. oh, I've heard of that one. Mm -hmm. places in America. And I felt super comfortable. I fell asleep on the floor. Um, and there's things like that have happened before. You know, I was exhausted, but I didn't feel I was just, it was one of those things like a total comfort just came over me. I relaxed mm -hmm. and uh, I fell asleep for a couple of minutes, but there's other places that you know you have to kind of watch your back or watch what you, what's going on around you because it, it does feel off. It does feel like a darker energy um, around you, but everyone's different. Everyone's experience is different and um, I enjoy it. I enjoy everything I do. Every, every part of this I, I love and I'll keep doing it until I stop. I think I'll stop yeah. when I, I quit enjoying it. Mm -hmm. That's probably the best time, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it'd be the same for us, I think. Um, I do. Quit. Has there been a place you've investigated, either in America or over here, I'm not sure if you've been over in the UK, um, that's actually scared you the most? There's been a couple of places um, that have done that here in the States. One in particular in Michigan um, is in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. We have two peninsulas in Michigan, Lower and Upper. So mm -hmm. this was a old musician's home that uh, dated back to the 1860s, 1870s. And she was a famous American musician uh, back in her time. She, I think she died in 1930s or 40s, but she sold a million records. Uh, Some of you never heard of, her name's Carrie Jacobs Bond. I'd never heard of her before we went to her house. And okay. we were just doing some investigating and it, nothing really seemed off or really wasn't much activity, but we were able to find one of her records or her, her vocals on YouTube. So one of our investigators started playing her music, which was creepy in itself. It was like a, a song from 1920. Very creepy sounding song, but it was a famous song back in those days. And the whole vibe changed. The activity changed. It ramped up. Um, I was sitting across, and it was Lauren, was the investigator that played the music. She was probably six feet away from me on the other side of the parlor. I was sitting on a couch, and I had a K2 at the end of the couch. And our digital recorder happened to catch this. Obviously, when these things happen, we never have a video going, of course, but that's the way it goes. But um, the digital recorder is actually picking up the K2 meter sliding on the sofa. And then it mm -hmm. turns red. It shoots in the air five feet, hits Lauren in the leg. Um, she jumps up screaming. I jump up screaming, and we run out of the house. And, <clears throat> you know, Jeff Adkins was upstairs in this house. He came running. He didn't know what happened. He came running out. And it was something I'll never forget. That kind of energy had that much, or that entity had so much energy, it could actually throw something um, yeah. five feet away from me. Um, actually hit Lauren in the leg. So I think it was kind of pissed at her because she mm -hmm. played that music and it hit her. So we uh, kind of regrouped and Jeff and I, I said, I'm, let's man up. I'm going to go back in there. Let's just go back in there and see what's going on. So. We took like a 20, 25 minute break. No one else wanted to go back in this house. So Jeff and I did. We went set and as soon as we walked in the door to get in the house, the staircase, the winding staircase was on the left. The parlor, what we, which we just ran out of, was on the right. So to get in and out of this house, you had to go towards the staircase out the door. So we sat down like a little okay. tea table, Jeff and I in the parlor, and we just started asking questions. And when we're asking questions, not even two minutes in, you can hear footsteps in the back of the house coming towards us. And it sounded like boots walking. They got mm -hmm. really heavy at the top of the staircase, like almost like a stomp. And then they came mm -hmm. running down the stairs. I could hear this thing running down the stairs. So I immediately just took off. I wanted to stay, but it was like one of those, again, two intuition, natural instinct type things for me to leave, like a fight or flight instinct. I just got up and ran out. And it was scary because I had to run by the staircase of the thing that was coming down towards us to get out of the, the house. We got out, <clears throat> we were able to get that on, on recorder, but it was, you could hear these, something was coming down the fast, like running down the steps toward us. It was a winding spiral staircase. We never found out what it was. Um, we think it was just, one of our psychics on our team thinks that that house was where all the spirits on this property would gather. And it was, had never been investigated before, I think nothing paranormal. And we were the first people to try and talk to whatever was there. And they might have been scared. You know, they don't mm -hmm. know what's going on. And I, you know, I had my theories on yeah. what is the other side or who, who are we talking to? And so they were just trying to scare us off. 
um, or might have been inquisitive to find out, but the way they did it scared us. It sounded like and it was on a old abandoned iron mine. This house it was a museum, and so the boots yeah. it sounded like boots. So it could have been an um, old miner, you know, that had passed away, and he was upset that we were invading their privacy or their space. Mm -hmm. That was one of the most where I can actually feel it and I can hear it. Um, the negative energy, you know, that was one thing I'll never forget. That <laughs> just that. Those, those, the feeling of what the hell is coming at us? What is it? You know, because you're excited at first because you hear footsteps and they're loud yeah. and they're obvious. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with a lot of paranormal evidence you get, it's very subtle. You have to listen over the recordings over and over to pick things up. This was mm -hmm. far from subtle. It was something making itself known, making its energy known to us. And um, it was something I'll never forget. That's probably one of the most scared I've ever been. Um, doing this stuff. So, have you ever been marked at all? No, I haven't. I, I've, I've had an attachment before, though, um, mm. which is, was a whole crazy thing in itself. Um, I can go into that story. I'll try to make it short because it's a long story. But uh, we had went to a place in Indiana called Randolph County Infirmary. That's right. basically a big asylum or a poorhouse in Indiana, fairly mm -hmm. good sized. And we had went there overnight, Jeff and I, and a couple other people from our team. And nothing really happened during the investigation, really. So it was about 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, we decided to turn in. And as soon as we laid down to go to sleep, we heard doors slamming all over. And we were the only people in there. We were locked. We were actually locked in. And we were the only people in that building. So we started hearing doors slam. And I, at first I thought, am I just like half asleep, half awake type of thing? You know, when you have that where it's like, did I just hear that? Yeah. So I sat up in bed and it did it again. And we all kind of, it was Jeff and Matt and I were the only ones sleeping there, kind of freaked out, kind of talked it out. We, I went down to make sure the doors were locked. They were all locked still, so I couldn't explain what it was, but I didn't really want to go by myself and explore and find out what it was at that point. Um, so we went to sleep and went home the next day. A huge storm, thunderstorm came overnight while we were there and a lot of crazy stuff. So you know, the next week or so, I started feeling off. I started feeling odd. Um, I didn't say anything to anyone because I didn't really understand at the time. Well, I thought maybe I was just going through, you know, an emotional spell or something. Who knows? And um, Jeff had called me and said, I, you know, I, I got to tell you something. This might sound weird, but there's been some crazy things happening to me lately. He told me the story that he was out and his car battery died for no reason. Um, there was another instance where he was in his um, shower and he lived by himself at the time. He got out of the shower and his door was locked and he didn't lock it. It was shut and locked and he never, he was by himself. He never had a reason to shut the door or lock it. Um, then he had woke up one night <clears throat> to a shadow figure in the middle of his hallway um, directly when he looked up from his bedroom and wow. he got up, jumped up, of course, scared to death. And the thing mm -hmm. ran at him and he ran towards it and ran and ran right through it. And he turned around and was gone. Oh. Well, I had a brand new 2016 Dodge Ram. And the same day Jeff's battery died, my battery died. I, you know, we had not known that this was happening to each other. And I had just, this truck was brand new. I had it for a couple of days. And I mean, this is all, this could happen to anybody anytime. I'm not saying this is paranormal. Yeah. Maybe it's just a freak coincidence. Um, but, I, you know, I called the dealership. They said, no, that usually doesn't happen. It's possible it could happen. I mean, they're brand new, brand new battery, brand new car. Um, and I had also woken up with a shadow figure standing over my bed. And I always rationalize, especially back then, this was early on when we first started, I rationalize things off so they don't mm -hmm. freak me out. Um, and then I had other things happen at the house. I heard stuff running up in my attic, and I got up in my attic. There's nothing up there. And then it, it started to make me feel almost not like myself. Like I was withdrawn. I didn't want to even I want to quit the paranormal. I had all these weird feelings. Mm -hmm. And I have psychic friends from all over the world, and <clears throat> they started messaging me. Um, saying you have something's on you. It's a, a negative energy from the 1800s that was a bad person, um, possibly a murderer. You need to do certain things to get this away from you. And it wasn't just one. It would be different if one psychic would have told me that. But it was mm -hmm. multiple that didn't know each other. And I had never told anybody about anything that was going yeah. on. They just had to reach out Crazy. to me because they felt that. So mm -hmm. I did some of the stuff they said. And basically, <clears throat> mine went away. Jeff's stayed for months. He had a lot of crazy experiences with it. Um, 
and I never used protection before. I used a lot of um, Catholic and, and Christian. I wear them all the time with me now. Uh, and stones I carry with me. But that time when I was back in the early days, I didn't at all. I thought, I'm a guy. Nothing's going to affect me. Nothing's going to harm me. But that instance really changed how I look at the paranormal. And that's, I think, one one thing people underestimate is when you go into these locations, you don't know. I don't know if we're really talking to ghosts. You know what I mean? I don't know I don't if know, they're exactly. really. I, I want them to be human spirits, but it could be, you know, everyone has these, it's aliens, it's a parallel universe. It's, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's all kinds of different theories that people have. Yeah. But, but at the end of the day, we don't know what we're dealing right. with at all. You know what I mean? So um, I just, I've always, then I've, taking my faith to another level when I do investigations, even myself, I'm more, I, I was raised a Catholic. I went to Catholic schools growing up, but I kind of got away from that <clears throat> as an adult. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of regrouped because I think religion ties into a lot of stuff we do too. Um, and I just feel for me personally, and it doesn't have to be for everybody that, that the, the church and, and the religious aspect gives me much comfort and I feel like I'm protected mm -hmm. at least when I go into yeah. these locations now. I've never had a, had an incident since. I mean, it could be all mind games too. That's my subconscious is thinking this, and I feel like I'm protected, so I am protected. Um, again, who knows if this stuff works? What we're doing to protect ourselves, even. That's true. A lot of people um, they do kind of like um, intent messages before as well. Right. So, like you know, saying stuff of intent, you know, like to keep yourself safe and. Mm. And I never listen Whatever to that. Whatever works for you, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's, I, I think so. And there's people that don't, don't wear anything and don't have any. Mm -hmm. word, I take a lot of um, stones with me too, protection stones and um, stuff like that. But there's people that don't bring anything and they never have, you know, they just don't believe in that stuff. And that's fine if you mm -hmm. don't. But it, it's worked for me since. I've never had an issue. So I'm just always going to do it that way. Um, yeah, we got a few. We carry like tourmaline and obsidian and yeah, we rose quartz and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we carry a few. Um, going back to uh, Gary, Gary's asked a question there. Um, oh, the previous place we were talking about. He said, are you planning on going back there soon? Actually, that would have been the previous one. Yeah, I've actually um, been to that house that I, was, I ran out of. We went back mm -hmm. again. Um, we gave a, a presentation to the town of our paranormal findings and our experiences. And so I didn't want to go back in that house. But everyone kept saying, come on, come on, come on, go back in the house. So Jeff and I went upstairs to one of the bedrooms. And I actually, we have this recording too. I said, I hate saying this, but if there's anyone upstairs come in this room with us, and you hear the same footsteps coming down the hall right into that bedroom. And I just said, "That's and this is in the daytime this time. This wasn't even at night. I just said mm -hmm. that I'm done with this place. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is like, and it didn't yeah. feel... It had that negative energy. It went from feeling fine to when that thing came in the room again, it was negative. So I just haven't been back since. It's like mm -hmm. a 12, 13 hour drive for us from Detroit to get up to this place, even though it's in Michigan. That's how far it is. So I've been there twice and I don't know if I'll ever. It's a beautiful area that the townspeople are beautiful, but there's something there and that place is definitely haunted that does not like me there. So I'm not going to push my luck with that one. So I've been back yeah. and I had experience again. It's weird how the energy can just change just like that as well. Yeah, we've experienced it, haven't we? So many yeah, times on different locations. It's one minute it's fine, and the next it feels. It's just. Well, it just changes, doesn't it? It's, it's it, you can't explain. explain. You can't explain, but you no, just know. It's like a light um, switch. It's like a light switch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you physically. Yeah. Someone said to you, oh, what does it feel like when it changes? You mm. physically can't explain it. Like, yeah. to try and put it into words, mm. it's impossible. That's why, I mean, I can't describe it, but a lot of times it's that even when the energy shifts, it's, it's, you feel like an energy rush. You feel like mm -hmm. you get hyped up. Sometimes my heart will start, you know, you get like anxiety almost, it feels like when the energy changes. You, yeah. you physically can feel that change. Um, yeah. There's other people, you know, like I was saying, that aren't in tune. If you're in tune with the other side and you're in tune with what you're doing, you'll notice those mm -hmm. subtle changes will be big changes. Um, it's happened to me a few times where I go to places I'm like, I'm not going in here. I feel, and I'm not psychic or anything by any means, but I think everyone has that natural instinct, natural ability built inside them. It's yeah. your own body's like protection. <laughs> yeah. Protect yourself. And I've mm -hmm. had that where it's like, Oh, I've been places where I felt sick to my stomach and had to leave. 
I've had other places where I've got extremely mad and angry for no reason and had to leave. When I leave mm -hmm. a location, I'm back to normal. So <clears throat> you can, your body, I think, is a good tool. Um, one of the most important tools for investigating is to trust your own instincts, mm -hmm. um, especially if you, you've done this for years where you, you can sense when something's happening and you could trust yeah. your body telling yeah. you, hey, don't mess with this. Or mm -hmm. I, there's been times where it's been negative, but I fought through it just to want to see what was happening. Um, and, you know, very rarely, a few times I've had actually to run out of places, very, just a very few times, but it's got that intense for me, but I trust my intuition. And I, I think, mm -hmm. you know, we're talking about equipment. I think you're your best piece of equipment. Honestly, if you're in yeah. tune, yeah. Mm -hmm. trust yourself. And, um, if you're with people you've investigated with for years and Jeff and I are best friends, so I trust, trust him. Like he trusts me. We both mm -hmm. can help each other. You know, we both know what's going on. And I think yeah. even the rest of our group, Brandy and Jen and, uh, Christopher and Matt, and everybody else, we've done this together for so long. It's like mm -hmm. a, a squad. You know, you got your backs and, and everyone knows what's going on and you learn how each other responds or reacts to things. Um, I've been in places where I've never been with a person before. Their first time investing with this person, it's a different experience, not the greatest experience. Um, but it's just, you know, everyone's different with this stuff. Everyone really is. Yeah. Have you ever done like um, sensory experiments at all? We did one. Um, it's like a sensory deprivation. We'll put blindfolds on here. You know, put uh, we use a, a PSB seven, and then we'll ask questions. That person can't hear what we're saying because we use noise canceling. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a good way, isn't it? And spit the words out. Yeah, we've mm -hmm. even tried it with um, a gas mask. Like change the scent. Like give them a different scent with their nose to use, so you have your eyes, ears, nose. I like to do one with taste too. Maybe chew a piece of gum while they're doing it, so they kind of get the whole different atmosphere away from what's around them, um, Good idea. and keep enhancing instead of just your eyes and your ears. You know, smell mm -hmm. something different, taste something different while you're doing this, because then that that's another way that your all your senses are deprived of where you're at at that moment. You know what I mean? You yeah. can't. You know, a lot of places, haunted places, smell musty. Because a lot of them are, are abandoned, you know, and you can get that smell. So if you could put rosemary or menthol or something under your nose, you can smell that, and you're mm -hmm. kind of yeah. out of that location, 100. percent Good thing. I did them. Um, you, you I had it done to me once. Um, we were on a location, and I opted in to do this sensory experiment. Uh, they gave me a blindfold. They put some earplugs in my ears and some headphones on top, so I couldn't see anything. I couldn't hear anything at all. Mm -hmm. And I just, I could feel something to one side of me. Like, it was almost like someone was really close to me. Right. And um, I was uh, unaware of what they were saying. They were asking someone to, like, move to one side so I could react. Uh, but I could see, like, even though it was pitch black, I couldn't see a thing. But I could see something darker than what I could see. It was right. really weird. And when, oh, yeah. I, when I took it off, they were asking questions. I was like, because they could see my reactions as well. Right. But that was weird. Yeah, that was a strange. Weirdest feeling. Strange thing. Because the questions we were asking was, can, um, can the spirit come close to her on her left left side? And and Jess was actually brushing her left arm as if someone was touching her. Yeah. Um, and she could actually feel it and, and see, even though she's got the blindfold on. Um, it's incredible. Incredible. It's like, you know when, like, if you're – standing i don't know in a queue or something like that you know when someone's coming up closer to you because you kind of it you sense, sense it yeah. and that's yeah. what it was like it was really weird and it, it is and um i don't like doing that we have other people that do that because i feel like i'm caged almost i don't, yeah. don't know anything that's going on around you basically um i still like to use i mean like i said with the senses you you kind of develop the sight sounds even smell sometimes at locations um, but I hate when that's taken away, you know, that I feel like I'm going to get anxiety or something. Um, mm -hmm. I've tried it a couple of times, but there's other guys on the team and other people enjoy doing that. And we've, I've thought about putting different, using different aspects of how to really isolate that person, um, yeah. you know, with the smell and taste and sight and hearing to see if you're totally, you have no sensory, your sensory deprivation is gone because you're not actually sensing the place that you're at it's taken away you're in some uh, your own little world and you're just hearing those voices come through the the psb7 spirit box um yeah. we've got some good results doing it that way it's it's, it's mm -hmm. hard i think on the person to sit there 
and not know what's being said and hear these crazy because sometimes sometimes they say swear words like f you and other things will come out of that and it kind of freaks you out you know when it says that stuff so usually when that happens you know you're dealing with a darker energy um mm -hmm. yeah um i've never so dealt with demonic or anything like that when it comes to shadows what's your opinions on what they actually are I still think what we're dealing with were people that used to be human. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I don't understand, you know, we're all energy while we're alive. And, and sometimes when you die, some people's energy lingers. Maybe mm -hmm. everyone's lingers a little bit and some are stronger than others for some reason. But I think, yeah. you know, the shadow figures are people. Somehow they can, they have enough energy to show themselves. I've never seen like on a movie or TV show where it's a person, you can see all the de details of their face and their clothes. I've experienced shadow figures four times in my life, and it's, it's always just been a shadow. It's always been a shadow darker than the darkness. And sometimes yeah. it's been lighter. The background's been lighter so you can see them better, but it's always been a silhouette of a person, mm -hmm. but not detailed, not super detailed. Yeah. You know? Or I've seen some, a couple experiences um, where it's been like a gray mist type figure. Um, again, no, no features that you could distinctly tell who it is or what it is. But it's always similarly shaped to a person. I, I really think it's a person Seems, able to manifest it, itself. Yeah, they do seem to be the most common sighted, don't they? Um, yeah. It's definitely. I would say it's the only thing I've actually physically seen in shadows. I I don't see see them as actual full apparitions or anything like that. I can't say as I've ever seen that. Um, but I've definitely, definitely seen shadows um, mm. more than on well, on more than one occasion. Yeah, I've, um, I've been lucky enough to s about four times. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget. Was that a full period. apparition? Or shadows? Pardon? Was that a full apparition? Or was that shadows? Some of it's been, some of it's been partial, like something peeked around a corner. Um, the yeah. first time I've ever seen one doing the paranormal is at a place called Ohio State Reformatory. It's a giant prison in Ohio that was actually Shawshank Redemption was actually filmed there. I don't know if you're familiar yeah. with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there was about four or five of us. And the, actually, there's people that work there that saw the shadow figure down at the end of the cell block walk out, walk towards us, dart really fast, and go up on the second tier of cell blocks. So I wasn't crazy. <laughs> so I thought maybe I'm seeing things, but there's other people to valid. That was the first time I ever saw a shadow figure. Then the way it moved, it moved so fast, and it moved like it was floating. But again, it was, it was just like a mass, though. It wasn't a you know a head and shoulder. It was more of a mass. Mm -hmm. um, there's been other times where I've actually seen like the silhouette of a head peek around a corner at me, that was a shadow figure, and then peek, keep peeking back and forth. And I shine my flashlight, it'd be gone. Turn it off and put it down, and you could see it like looking at us. Um, usually, it's just a mass, though. You know, a huge dark mass. Um, sometimes it has some features of a human. Um, a mm -hmm. lot of people think it's demons. <laughs> I don't think that. I think it's actually people. Um, how they yeah. have the energy to manifest that, I don't know. Um, because there's a lot of energies and spirits yeah. that we deal with can't do those things. Um, do you think the, the energy the energy is consumed within the brickwork? I think a lot of buildings. locations retain energy. Um, and mm -hmm. going back to that with our spirit boxes, some of our spirit boxes are built from an old uh, psychiatric asylum here in Michigan. It was, it was wood we gathered from there, and they've turned them into spirit boxes. And I think the theory for that, even for me, is that th that wood from those locations and a location like a prison, is the energy is mm -hmm. retained in those items, I think. Yes, um, yeah. I really believe that. <clears throat> and with a prison or in a hospital, you know, any hospital where there's a lot of tragedy, a lot of death, um, I think a lot of those energies still linger behind for some reason. I think some things don't know they're dead. You know, mm -hmm. I yeah. think they don't understand that they're dead and why they haven't passed on or why they haven't, why, why they're still here fascinates me. You know what I mean? Because it's not everybody. Why can't, you know, my grandparents pass away or my dad, why aren't they still here? You know, I never yeah. picked up on my dad. I never picked up my grandparents but I've been able to pick up on other things. So it's yeah. not every energy stays, but some mm -hmm. does for some reason. Some of the energy that stays is very, very strong. And they yeah. either have a message for someone or they have a message to get out sometimes, yeah. or I feel that they don't know that they're dead. They don't know why they're here. Um, it's gotta be a strange feeling. I can't imagine feeling 
one foot in, one foot out of life mm -hmm. and death. Um, yeah. You know, if you're a person, I don't know, that would really screw your mind up, you know, thinking what, what's, what happened to me, what happened to me, you know, and, and I try to be respectful for that reason. I don't go and provoke. I've never been that type of pe person to provoke. One thing we don't do is provoke. Always respectful to the location mm -hmm. because, again, mm -hmm. you don't know what energies um, retained in these locations either. Yeah. Um, I think, and it's always helped us. We've got great evidence. Um, but I think it's the way we approach things, being very respectful, being um, thankful also for them communicating with us. You know, but some people do it the opposite way. Some people provoke and they get those negative energies back. But you got to think if you, someone, a stranger walks into your house and starts asking you a bunch of questions, how are you going to react when you're alive? If someone walked to my door and started acting the way okay. I yeah. kick him in the ass and say, get the hell out of my house. You know, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> it's, a, it's all about being respectful, isn't it? Yeah, um, I, I think it goes a long way. And, um, and energies, you know, people say there's demonic, and I'm sure there is, and we've never ran into it. And I, thankfully, you never have because that's something like a really – wreak havoc in your own life and really do a lot of damage oh, definitely yeah. yeah yeah but i think there's good people in the world there's bad people and when you die you don't change if you're a good person in this life you're going to be a good person in the afterlife if you're a bad person an asshole in this life it's not going to change in the afterlife Strong, yeah. strongly what we believe um, yeah. same thing so those bad energies or negative energies i think are just bad people that are still mm -hmm. bad and you know sometimes they like being that way maybe they thrive on being that person that can scare people or trying to harm people. And, you know, it doesn't mean it's demonic, but it does mean that there's negative, there are negative energies, negative energy all around us every day. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Same with prisons and things. I mean, it's not just, it's not just all bad, is it, in, in a prison? I mean, some people are in there for like, well, for not, for not committing the crime. Um, some people are innocent. So the energy is not always. No, you got to think. Yeah. Some people go in prison. Maybe they get life in prison for murder, but they've changed their whole life. Yeah, yeah. You know, they had did this when they were in their twenties, and they've people change. I believe people mm -hmm. can change. You can do horrible yes. things. Um, at any time in your life, and I think you can if you look for forgiveness and you mean that, that you you really are truly looking to change. Anyone mm -hmm. can change. So yeah. even in the prison, I think there's people that were bad when they first came in. By the time they die, they're a totally different person. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they just got a life sentence for you know, drug, drugs and stuff like that, uh, you know, nonviolent crimes that you're in prison and die from. So there's a lot of different energies that are in there. And prisons, not all the energies are bad. You know, there are bad no, people that no, die in prison. No, no. Horrible, horrible people that should rot in prison for the crimes mm -hmm. they committed. But there's some people, you know, they change. They, they turn to the Lord or, or whatever they do to try and change their life and get structure and um, trying or to they've been them. wrongly wrongly convicted as well because yeah, that happens. Do that too, yeah. Quite often, doesn't so, it? It's just yeah. like hospitals. Hospitals, you know, a lot thousands of people die in hospitals in the life of a hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, some are some are good people, some are bad. So some of that bad energy yeah. lingers, some of the good energy lingers. It's just that's why this fascinates me because I don't know. You know, I'm just this is just what I think. You know, some people could think other things because there's no scientists sitting there telling us. There's no textbooks to go read and study on this to figure no. out no. what we're dealing with. We're learning as we go. You know what I mean? And if we can document what we learn, <clears throat> I don't really call this a science. I think it's a pseudoscience still. Um, it's not really recognized as a science. So I call it more of a paranormal community instead of like a paranormal mm -hmm. field. And because, you know, science, we don't have a controlled environment. To, to, for, to be a, uh, considered science, It'd have to be in a controlled environment. So you'd have to have a haunted location inside of a bubble, basically, and studied for a year with, you know, yeah. doing tests with controlled environments and all kinds of different things to find out if it's truly paranormal activity or if it's something else. And <clears throat> I think it's good that we can document what happens. And maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 years down the road after I'm dead and gone, technology will change and there will be a science for it. But we'll be able to leave kind of a footprint of the yeah. beginning of the studies and our evidence left behind. And maybe what we're talking to now will get laughed at 50, 60 years ago. Like, oh, these guys don't know what they're talking, you know? Um, <laughs> but it's a start. I think it's a good start. And um, it's fun. Yeah, technology, technology has also come a long way, hasn't it? Um, Even iPhones. iPhones, you can capture stuff on iPhones. I've mm -hmm. had people capture stuff yeah. on my photo and things like that. So the as more as the technology gets better, I yeah. think it's so does the understanding, doesn't it? Yeah. That also improves. Mm -hmm. 
And I think That's also I like. the energy, obviously with the climate across the country, mm -hmm. all the violence and um, the energy is dark now, but I think there's a, a big energy and, that's a whole other thing I think about. Like, I think the devil and demons are present right now. I think everything that we're seeing right now, if, even if you're not religious, you can go back through the Bible and see that things are being told back then of happening are happening now. And yeah. I, I notice even shadow figures and things like that, the, the darker energies are stronger, more prevalent, prevalent now than they ever have been since I've started yes. doing this. Um, you see the rioting and the just the, so much hate and I think that wraps up the energy. I think that ramps up the negative energy. It, it feeds it. Um, mm -hmm. That's another thing we have to look look into <laughs> and try and figure out because I don't think it's ever been this way, at least not in my lifetime, as much chaos and hatred for people that you used to be friends with that you hate now just because of your political yeah. belief or some, yeah. some it's not even really, it's so stupid really. Um, where you're either one, this side, or, if you're not on this side, you're not my friend anymore. You know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. like, it's, it's that way. But I think that feeds so much into the paranormal right now. It feeds so yeah, much yeah. energy. And I think that's why I notice a lot of people besides me are getting a lot of evidence um, more than ever that I've noticed, really. Um, again, that's a theory, but it, it would make sense, honestly, because there's a lot of negative energy. There's still a lot of positive energy in the world, but a lot of the times it seems like the negative energy is taking over sometimes. It, it really is hard sometimes to see it not taking over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we actually have a question from Dennis Glenn. Um, saying, have you ever come across bullying in the field? And that's happening quite a and lot that's lately. That's also happening quite often. You know, I, I see it, I've had friends. I've never, um, I don't take part in any drama or um, I've never had anyone, I, you know, you're gonna have people, people hate us because we're successful, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Until you get to know us, we're, we're actually good people. <laughs> At least I think we're yeah. good people, you know. Um, <laughs> but you do see people attack people because they're successful. Mm -hmm. Or I don't care what people do. I honestly don't care what, how people investigate. I don't care what they say is their evidence. I'm not exactly. here to judge, judge anyone at all. Um, I never have and I never will. I encourage people to try their own things. Um you know, some people they keep saying people want to be on TV. Some people do it for this reasons. I don't really care what you're doing it for, as long as yeah. you're doing it, keep doing it. <laughs> I'm not exactly. one to judge. I'm not one to all, judge. We're all doing the same thing. We're all, you know. Yeah. We're all investigating. Right. It's a shame that we all just can't get get on and and everyone share share evidence. Share um, the passion. Instead of it being an us and them type thing, it seems to be like that. It's, it's, and some of it I don't even understand. I, I mean, I've had people no. um, that were best friends that hate each other now because they want um, different teams or something. You know what I mean? It's like, we're just doing the paranormal. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not, it's not something to have drama about. It's not something to hate each other for. It's not, um, to do your own thing. Do yourself. Don't worry about what other people do. Um, if someone irritates you, don't follow them or don't look at their posts or whatever. You know, don't bully people. Um, because bullying itself can affect people. I'm, I'm a proponent against bullying, um, yeah. Yeah. suicide, um, hundred percent help with suicide prevention and depression. And I have teenage kids, you know, and I see people, I think teenagers are vicious, but unless these adults and the paranormal are sometimes more vicious than teenagers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. There's really no need for, it, I don't think, um, no. No. I can't think of a good reason to, um, turn on each other. Um, it just doesn't make sense to me because at the end of the day, you're not doing what you're doing to be friends with everyone in the paranormal. You're doing it for people that follow what you do um, mm -hmm. and other people. You're not doing it to make friends with Joe Schmo from Texas City Paranormal. You know what I mean? You're not doing it for them. You're doing it for yourself, first of all. Yes, and then you're doing it for yeah. the people that follow you. If you have a yes. Facebook exactly. page, you have social media where you can share your experiences or you lecture the people that come to your lectures, those that's what you're doing it for. Um, yeah. so, you know, that's, I think people kind of fall away from that. Like who's the most popular, or who's this or that. And it's really not important. I mean, it's never been important to me, um, but that's just my personality. <laughs> I've never been the type of person to bully. I've tried to been just the opposite to help people. And, you know, the paranormal community says that they want to help people. Well, you can help each other by leaving each other alone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. 
and just yes. carry on with your own life, carry on your own business, and not worry about what other people do. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. It's quite easy too, isn't it? Really, I don't know. Why. Very simple. Very simple. Find All it right. so difficult. Um, just concentrate on what that? you're doing. Yeah. Don't worry about anybody else. Another question there from Justin Clifford. Justin Clifford said, what about people's feelings as everyone will not be in a good place right now? Does that energy feed it too? I think that's touched on a little bit what we we're talking about with like mm -hmm. the world itself, the chaos that the world is and all over, you know, especially with COVID. And then you have, you know, the, we have the presidential elections here and um, yeah. the riots and stuff. And I think that feeds the negative and dark energies feed off that. I, I guarantee you, mm -hmm. 100% guarantee that. So, um, and I think when we go investigate, I do think that energies feed off your energy. Um, you know, and I've been with people before that said, you can use my energy to communicate, you know, and it's, it's happened. Yeah. I never do that myself because again, just to be safe, you don't know what you're dealing with, you know, and I don't mm -hmm. want to invite something in to take my energy or into my body. Um, but some people do, and that's fine. I don't judge them on that either. It's just something I wouldn't do. Um, or, you, you know, other theory, obviously, everyone knows about batteries getting drained. I've had that happen before. I have, we've done public events with total strangers that would come up. I remember one one event we did at a hospital, and on this, this particular tour, six or seven different people came and showed me. Their phone had died completely. It was 100%. And the, people didn't know each other either, just kind of random people. Fine. So, and that, that time, that energy was really ramped up for um, paranormal activity. So, again, we don't know if that's really how it works. Mm -hmm. It seems sometimes that, you know, when you change batteries on equipment and they die right away, especially cameras, you can go through camera batteries really, really quick. And normally, yeah. it wouldn't happen if you're just filming, you know, a baseball game or something outside. Um, I can't explain that. I'm not sure. If that's them actually using the battery energy, if they're using our energy, I do know after investigations, I've been extremely wiped out where I'll be tired for the next day. Sometimes it's two days. Like I have no energy myself. So again, could that be, you know, the paranormal activity and the entities using your energy? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I know people call it paranormal hangover or whatnot. They do. I was just about to say, yeah. Yeah, um, they do. I mean, we've had a few few of those haven't we yeah ourselves um just, from different locations you can't explain um, it i mean like, you don't know no, why no, you're no. sleeping you get a good sleep you it's not mm. any different than the other day but that the next day after investigation i've had a few times where i'm just completely wiped out where i don't want to get off the couch or i don't want to feel like doing anything i'm just so tired and i've had it last like a couple days even where it's just totally drained me um i can't explain it you know i don't know is that is that really did a, a entity drain my energy you know, during our investigation or not, it's hard to explain. Yeah, it's it is hard though because like, Tricky, isn't it? You just it's different locations, different types of energy, isn't it? I think there's more unanswered questions in the paranormal than there are answered, and I don't yeah. think any of the answers we have, we don't know if they're the right answers or not. You know what I mean? Right. So, right. but I think that's the big draw for me that keeps me coming back is these unanswered questions, mm -hmm. and that. Yeah. The, the broad majority of unanswered questions that most paranormal investors have, then your own personal questions that you want to find out um, for yourself are still unanswered, you know, and that just keeps drawing you back for more, keeps drawing you back for more. And I think that's the huge part of why I do it. I love doing it. Um, mm -hmm. And it's fun. And <clears throat> for me, it's been a whole, like I was saying earlier, it's I, being able to talk about this openly. My first paranormal experience was in the eighties when there was no television, sh television shows. My father was a police officer. I went to a Catholic school, and you're taught growing up that ghosts don't exist. Um, mm -hmm. I couldn't talk to anybody about this stuff until I got older. <laughs> I finally said, what the hell? I don't care what people think about me. Because um, it was still kind of taboo in the 80s, and that, but now it's mainstream. We can have a show like this and talk about this openly. Yeah. Um, people not think we're weird. Well, we are weird probably for what we believe in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we can actually talk about it yeah. openly. Mm -hmm. There's TV shows about it now, and, and um, we've had – you know, doctors and lawyers and, you know, every walk of life talk to us about their paranormal experiences now. So it's open and out there more than ever, too. And I think it's made that, you know, I, I give the TV shows, whether you like them or not, a lot of credit for opening that up for us to mm -hmm. be able to talk about this stuff and be able to go in these locations that are haunted, that people that own these shops would have never let us in there before. But now the kids kind of popular. They know about it. They'll let you in to investigate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's opened a lot of doors and made things easier in a way for us. Um, 
But it's just, it's still a work in progress. It's going to take forever. But I think it's made leaps and bounds just in the last five, six years um, with the technology, with the TV shows, with some people working together. Um, hopefully more people work together down the road. Or, you know, we can have people from the UK work with us, from um, France or whatever. So we're all working together and kind of comparing evidence. You know, because when you go to say we go to the same location, you might not get the same experience I got to experience. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's another thing that kind of <clears throat> intrigues me is 100 people can go to the same location, 100 people can walk out of that with different evidence. Mm -hmm. Not the same one you got. You know what I mean? So why is that? If you go to a location, why doesn't everyone get the same experience if they go there? The same voices, the same communication. Um, I think that's something to say, too. Why is that? How many energies really are those? If you don't talk to the same person the next time you go, there's been places I go that I don't that I'm familiar with, and we'll get the same voices and same people when they give us their name, talk to us consistently. Um, why is that? <laughs> you know, why is that? Why does that happen? Um, but you get someone else to the same place we go to, and they don't get the same person talking to them, or they don't get the same evidence. Exactly. So there's so many questions, you know, that I'd like to get answers for. I doubt I'll ever be able to until I finally cross over to the other side. I'll come back and haunt people and figure it out myself. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but until then, it's so, questions I want to answer, want to answer it if I can. Yeah. So after all this COVID is done with and we can finally get back out and investigate again, um, where would be the place you would start to go? What would be your first location? <sighs> There's a, a few places I'd like to go to. I'd obviously like to get to the UK. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know who knows if that'll ever happen the way things are going. Cause I just, um, there's so much history there in the United States history. The oldest place I've ever been to was, uh, 1774 at a place in, um, West Virginia. It was the oldest place I've been to like in Detroit and a place on Michigan there, you know, 1800s, mid 1800s. So you go to UK, you're talking about seven, 800 year old places. Yeah. The, nice. We've got, we've actually got one down the road from us actually, haven't we? We've got, um, a 13th century in, it is just beautiful. phenomenal. It is beautiful. Beautiful building. Um, they don't advertise the fact that it's haunted, um, which is a shame. But it's where I had my first. It's oh, wow. the incredible. point of like senses wise. I remember we were stayed in the room and we didn't know it was that haunted at the time. Mm. And you took me off my birthday, didn't you? Yeah, it's a treat. And I come over with this almighty headache. I felt physically unwell. And as soon as I left the room, I was absolutely fine. Mm. And I think at the time we only had a our phone and the Ovilus. And so we were using that because we didn't know much on its paranormal side. And after we went down for dinner, we left the room. I felt fine. We came back. We started using the Ovilus and the stuff that was coming through. I think we still got EVPs from our recorder as well. Yeah, and um, yeah, the stuff that came through on there. And then, then my headache came back again. Everything just came. It, just, it was really weird. Obelis was just going crazy. Yeah, we actually videoed a black shape as well come across oh. the bed. Um, it was really weird. It, it, it was kind of slivered like a snake, yeah, it was if really that weird. makes sense. Um, we, we call it on camera. We've got the video still. Um, but that's just one of the good places. We've got Chapter Mallet Prison as well down the road from us. Um, that goes back to five, 1610. Five miles away. So it goes back to about 1610. Because I like the I mean... To me, doing the paranormal is a part of it, but the history is a part of it also. I'm very into the the history of a location. Historical preservation is huge for us, too. Yeah. So there's a lot that goes into it besides just going to a haunted house. We do a lot of research on who lived there, if we can find out. But it's America has some old places, not as old as the UK and, and a lot of haunted places, but still I get like to get to the UK and just, even if I don't get to investigate, just go and absorb some of the history. Um, you know, that's, it's the main thing to me, but I'm trying to think of a place I want to go to, I'm looking forward to a place called Bruce mansion, um, okay. in, in 2021. That's, we should be there in April. So, okay. um, it's, I've investigated there a little bit last year, but COVID throws a wrinkle in everything. So hopefully we can get back to it this year, but that's a place, again, I saw a shadow figure and it kind of reminded me, cause I think again, we get, uh, desensitized doing so many investigations, you get desensitized to your experiences. Like you can hear a door yeah. knock or see a shadow figure and you're not like you used to be <laughs> like, Oh my God, I just see that. 
Um, so this place reminded me why I do the paranormal and why I love it. I was scared shitless at this place. So uh, it kind of got me excited again. So it's, you got to have those reminders, I think, once in a while of why you do this. Um, and it's, it's one of those, you know, especially when it's giving you that scare factor and that fear that you just want to go back again. Right. Right. Unanswered questions. Oh, yeah. Really go I, back. I love that feeling. I love that adrenaline rush of the fear of places and locations. And you start to kind of forget about it. You start to see so much and feel so much. You're like, it's not a big deal anymore. So that place, mm -hmm. whatever I want was there, wanted to remind me of why I do that. And I, thankfully, it did. It really yeah. got refocused again. And um, I mean, I've always been focused. We kind of, we do so many. We go to so many places all the time. We've already done four investigations this year. <laughs> you know, this, this will be February uh, coming up next week. So we stay busy. We always do stuff, always, always doing things and going new places. So I kind of had to get that reminder and it re got me remotivated again to um, remember why I started doing this stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, this has definitely been the longest we've ever not done anything. Yeah. Um, we have big plans Too for long. like loads of location planned, um, but none of it's been able to happen. Yeah, we're still um, in lockdown, so. so we're still in lockdown over here. Um, Our third one. Yeah, and we're just hoping that by the summer we could probably start getting back to some kind of normality. There's talks. Um, there is talks with it with the vaccine. Um, so there is a bit of positivity, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're open to. Hopefully the summer, I mean, spring, the, like all the restaurants have been closed here. God, so yeah. for months now. And, and they're going to supposedly open them up next week, possibly. But I mean, mm -hmm. every, it's just different. The, basically, it's your pencils that are open to grocery stores and gas stations. Um, we're on a hard lockdown in the beginning and then it loosened up and then they quit all the sports again. It's just, it's so up and down. And <clears throat> I know they don't know what they're, what's happening and they're basing off the science, but it's kind of screwed up uh, people's lives. Really. Yeah. Definitely. So different. Yeah. We're, we're not built for having clothes, uh, shops closed for months no. on end. No, no, not you having know? a life really, isn't it? No. It's not good for you. Being stripped of everything, isn't it? Yeah. It is. I mean, eventually it's got to let up but you know hopefully the warmer weather like it was last summer where they kind of you know here though i can dr travel down to ohio which is 45 minutes to an hour for me and go to restaurants and every everything's wide open you know i go to mm -hmm. indiana wide open but michigan it's locked down every state is different how they want to handle it yeah um, which is you know you could travel to other we went to indiana a couple times this past this year actually um and they have no quarantine stuff like that everything's open and uh, we have to take it for where we can get it and mm -hmm. um to see what happens you know hopefully things will change i mean that's all we can do in it really that's all we can do take it day by day we can ride really. it. Oh, wow. yeah really yeah. yeah wow thank you very much todd for thanks for having me time. i enjoyed yeah. myself thanks, guys. i appreciate I it flew by. flown by already i didn't um, know we're done. Yep, we're done that was good yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's brilliant talking to you. Fantastic. And Thank you for your time. When's your next show on Discovery Plus? It should be, I don't know, they'll email me next week. I think it'll be probably in the fall, September. Yeah. But I don't know for sure. That'd I'll be good. We'll keep an eye out for that. Yeah. Excellent. And Thanks all your other programs, are they on Discovery Plus at all? Or? Yeah, yep, they're all on there. So you yeah. can go through and... and Go like the on demand section of Discovery Plus, and um, yeah, they're pretty good shows. Brilliant. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Todd. Thank you, really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. We'll speak to you soon. All right, bye. Take it easy. Thank you. Right, guys. Thank you for joining us. Um, Tomorrow night at seven o'clock is Gary Fields with GF Uncensored. So tune in for that one. He'll be talking to Darren Higgins. And we will be back again in two weeks with Ed and Paul from GPIS. Thank you for watching and speak to you all soon. Thank you, guys.